Trends The US economy has reached a tipping point that threatens the world with an unprecedented crisis. But as it turns out, there is a way out. Imagine that the US national debt of $35 trillion could simply be cancelled. How could the scam of the century be pulled off and what would the consequences be? Subscribe to the channel and let's figure it out. The issue of the American national debt has been discussed for decades and most arguments are not worth your attention. However, we have decided to raise this topic because recent economic decisions have led to a truly difficult situation, which billionaire Ray Dalio highlighted in his latest interview. The discussion revolves around the debt spiral. Its beginning was set in motion by Trump when he printed $3 trillion to save the country from the coronavirus pandemic. Then, Biden exacerbated the situation by adding another $3 trillion to fulfill his campaign promises. How did the debt spiral, also known as the spiral of death, form? The first stage you understand already, printing money at record speeds laid the groundwork for record inflation growth in the United States. Nothing like this has happened in the last 25 years. Then, the Federal Reserve jumped in, rapidly raising the federal funds rate, but failing to fully curb price increases. The current situation is as follows. Inflation is at 3%. As Jerome Powell, the master of the printing press, warns us, it might remain at these levels for a long time. Moreover, the Fed does not rule out that the situation with rising prices may worsen again, forcing them to raise rates further. Today, we see optimism in the stock market. The S&P 500 index has recently hit historic highs several times. The reason for this optimism is the belief that the Fed has finished its rate hiking cycle. By the end of 2024, we expect to see a shift in monetary policy, meaning rates will go down. But Dalio has a different view. He points out that in the event of sticky inflation, which stays around 3% for a long time, the government, through the Fed, will have to keep Treasury yields above 4%. This can only be achieved with high rates because the US budget is currently in deficit. The country consumes more than it earns and therefore needs to borrow constantly. This was not a problem with low inflation when borrowing was nearly free. But now, investors want their capital preserved and earning returns, so they need to be offered at least 1.5% above inflation. For instance, in October 2023, the Treasury borrowed $275 billion in just one day. If the government does not slow down, it will have to increase the national debt by a trillion dollars a month. By 2050, the debt-to-GDP ratio will rise from the current 129% to 200%. For context, the debt-to-GDP ratio today already exceeds World War II levels. According to Ray Dalio, America has already passed the critical point where servicing the national debt becomes the government's main expenditure, requiring it to borrow more and more money. It is impossible to keep spinning the debt spiral indefinitely, and sooner or later, we might indeed see a US default, resulting in an unprecedented financial crisis worldwide. But there is actually a way out. The US can cancel its own debt, and they have several options to do so. How this can be done, and how Donald Trump is involved, I will explain further. It is clear that the United States is not planning to let the national debt reach a point of no return, where default becomes inevitable. They will try to write off the debt or adjust its ratio to GDP to make the country's budget surplus again. This can be done in the following ways. The first is to cancel the debts. This idea is deeply rooted in the history of the State of Israel. Not the one currently at war, but the one founded over 1,000 years BC. In their laws, there was a so-called Jubilee year, after which all debts were simply forgiven. Today, this idea has survived in the following interpretation. 
After some events radically change the state system, such as a war or revolution, all debts can be nullified. It is clear that the United States is not planning a jubilee year, but this principle can be partially implemented, and this is already happening. Biden ran for election with a promise to forgive student loans, and at the beginning of December, the Department of Education cancelled $5 billion in loans. There is still a significant amount of $135 billion left. Meanwhile, Biden's successor, the current Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris, will want to gain a couple of percentage points from students in the upcoming election, so this practice is likely to continue. It should be understood that by forgiving student loans, the government improves their well-being and increases their parents' income. This means more money can be collected from them into the economy so that people pay off not personal debts, but national ones. This idea can be further developed. It is clear that no one will forgive the US if the Federal Reserve prints money and buys up all its national debt. Such actions would send the dollar below ground. But what if other countries, such as Japan, China and the United Kingdom, want to sell treasury bonds because they need the money? This could happen due to a global recession, and in such a case, everything would seem fair as the Federal Reserve would effectively do them a favor by providing dollars as protection against a financial crisis. And then the magic happens, where the national debt remains enormous, but the Federal Reserve holds most of it. According to its operating rules, the Federal Reserve spends its profits on its employees, dividends to member banks, and returns the remaining funds to the Treasury. This means the US government will pay interest on the debts directly to the Federal Reserve, which will return it back as earned money. There is a simple analogy. When your left pocket owes your right pocket, you personally have no debt. The second path is called deflationary reduction, and it is much worse than the first. Every dollar in the world is rehypothecated several times. If a bank that issued a loan goes bankrupt, those debts simply disappear. In the spring, we saw a small wave of bank failures, and the Federal Reserve saved the system by printing more than $300 billion. But in fact, they could have avoided doing so. They could have returned only the deposits guaranteed by the government and simply written off the rest. Interestingly, when something like this happens, people are not relieved of their credit burden. Their debts are simply sold to another bank. However, what the bank itself owed, in the form of deposits and interest on them, as well as the capitalization of bankrupt companies, simply vanishes. There is also a third and fourth way to write off the national debt, which are opposites of each other. One can initiate an industrial boom that leads to a sharp increase in the country's GDP, making it no longer a problem to pay the bills since the budget becomes surplus. How can this be done? For example, by dramatically increasing labour efficiency. Currently, there are high hopes for this in terms of robotics and artificial intelligence. But there is a simpler method, such as war, and we can see this already. Modern warfare involves the consumption of tens of thousands of shells and missiles every day. Producing them is a huge leap in the development of one's own economy, provided that the fighting is not taking place directly on your territory. I'm not going to tell you various theories about who earns what from war, but you must understand that while people are dying in Ukraine, other countries on different sides of the opposing camps are showing good GDP growth statistics. The fourth way is to write off the national debt through drastic spending cuts. This is also quite feasible, especially if Trump returns to the White House. He is known as a politician whose program is focused exclusively on the United States, and therefore it is no wonder that European and Asian countries fear that Mr. Donald might decide to save money at their expense. However, it is important to understand that it is impossible to stop the debt spiral simply by cutting spending on support for allies. It will also be necessary to cut a lot domestically, 
which will lead to a depression in the economy. But most people do not want to delve into causes and effects. It is much easier for them to believe in the promises of politicians who offer an easy way to solve problems.